Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at plane polarisation, polarisation of a wave through a slit, and we're going to finish with a summary. So we're going to start off by introducing the idea of plane polarisation and to try and understand what we mean by a polarised wave. We know that the direction of oscillation in a transverse wave is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So for example, for this wave here, we can see that the direction of oscillation is this way. So if we're looking at the page, it's up and down the page. That's the direction of oscillation. And we know that the direction of propagation is perpendicular to the direction of oscillation. So the direction of propagation is this way of the wave. So they're both perpendicular to each other. And remember, when defining the direction of propagation, it's hard to tell by just looking at the wave. So usually we define it as one direction or the other, just making sure that it's perpendicular to the direction of oscillation. But now, imagine we view the wave from a different perspective, where the direction of propagation is either into or out of the plane of the screen. So let's imagine that we're this person here, and this is the angle that we're viewing the wave from. So if we're viewing the wave from this perspective, we can see that the direction of oscillation is going to be up and down like this. From what we can see of the wave, that's what it appears to be. And we know that the direction of propagation is out of the screen, so it's like the wave is coming towards you. In this point of view, we can see that the direction of oscillation of a transverse wave could be along any angle or even rotate with time. So we're saying here that the direction of propagation is out of the screen. So that means the direction of propagation is actually perpendicular to the plane of the screen. So this tells us that we could have lots of different directions of oscillation provided that all the direction of oscillations are within the plane of the screen. So if we're imagining here that the wave is coming out towards us, then all these directions of oscillations that we've got, so this one and this one and all of them, they're all actually perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So we can see that in fact we can have lots of different directions of oscillations for one particular direction of propagation. So each of these directions might be at different times. So this one might be at T1, this one at T2, this one at T3 and this one at T4. So this shows us that a transverse wave travelling in a certain direction can actually have lots of different directions of oscillation. Because remember, the way we defined a transverse wave is that the direction of oscillation is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. And we can see that we've actually got lots of different directions of oscillation that are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Polarization is the term used to describe which planes the transverse waves oscillate in. The arrow indicates the plane of polarization. So the pink arrow here tells us the plane of polarization. And this blue arrow shows us the direction of propagation. And remember, we said the direction of propagation is coming out of the screen. So we're imagining that this here is our screen and our wave is coming out of the screen. So we can see here that we've got our transverse wave because it's oscillating perpendicular to the direction of propagation and our plane of polarization is going into the screen. So this is our plane of polarization. It lies along this side here, and we can see that it's still perpendicular to the direction of propagation, which is why we've got a transverse wave. But now, rather than having all the different orientations of the wave, we've only got one. So we see that the wave has been polarized. If the direction of oscillation remains in one place, it is plane polarised, or linearly polarised. So if this direction of oscillation stays in one place, then we can say that we've actually got a plane polarised wave. If the oscillation is in more than one plane, the wave is said to be unpolarised. 
So in this case, this is our direction of propagation. And remember, we said for a transverse wave that we have lots of different possible directions of oscillations. And that's what we've got here. We've got more than one possible oscillation direction that's perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So we've got this one here, this one, and this one. So they're all oscillations in different planes. So we say that this wave here is unpolarized. So now we're going to look at how we can polarize a wave through a slit. We can explain the polarization of all transverse waves by thinking about a wave traveling along a rope passing through a slit. So we're imagining that we're creating a wave on this rope. So let's imagine that we use this rope here to create a wave. So we can create a wave on a rope by moving our hand. And in order to investigate polarization, we can see what happens to this wave when it passes through a slit. An unpolarized wave passing through a slit of any orientation will be plane polarized after transmission. So before this wave passes through a slit, it's unpolarized. And this is because we can see it's oscillating at lots of different directions to its direction of propagation. So its direction of propagation is this way. But we have more than one direction of oscillation. So we've got this direction, this one, this one, this one, this one, and so on. So we can see that we've got lots of different directions of oscillation, so it's unpolarized. And we can see that once this wave passes through the slit, we've only got one direction of oscillation, this direction here. So we say that the wave has become linearly polarized. And we say that a wave is linearly polarized if it's only oscillating in one direction. If the slit is parallel to the plane of polarization, the wave passes through unaffected. So if the wave is already linearly polarized, so that the wave only oscillates in the same direction as the slit direction, and the slit direction is along this way, then the wave passes through unaffected. So we can see that it's still oscillating in its initial direction and that hasn't changed. And that's because the slit direction is parallel to the plane of polarization of the wave. So the two are parallel to each other, which is why the wave goes through unaffected. If the slit is perpendicular to the plane of polarization, then the wave cannot pass through. So now our slit direction is this way, but now the plane of polarization of the wave is perpendicular to the slit direction. So we can see that again, the wave is initially linearly polarized. So it's already been polarized and it only oscillates in one direction. However, because this is perpendicular to the slit direction, that means no wave passes through. The slit blocks the wave. So we can see that the two are perpendicular and this is the result we get. If the plane of polarization has a component parallel to the slit, then the wave will pass through, but the intensity will be reduced. So we've got another initially polarized wave. So this, again, we say is linearly polarized. However, this time, it's not polarized perpendicular or parallel to the slit direction. Remember, the slit direction is this way. So in this case, some of the wave will pass through. So what happens now when this wave passes through the slit is its plane of polarization changes. So we can now see that the new plane of polarization is parallel to the slit direction. However, the wave now has a smaller amplitude and therefore a smaller intensity. So in this case, 
we get a component of the initially linearly polarized wave that's parallel to the slit. So this is our slit direction and we get a component that's parallel to the slit. So we can see that because we've only got component of the initial wave, that's why its amplitude and therefore its intensity decreases. All transverse waves follow these rules when polarized. In general, transverse waves are polarized using polarizing filters. So we begin with an unpolarized wave, which is what we've got here. And we can see that we've got all these different planes of polarization initially. And our direction of propagation is along this way, so it's perpendicular to all the polarization directions. So we can see that this unpolarized wave then passes through a polarizing filter, which is what we have here. And after it passes through the polarizing filter, we've seen we end up with a linearly polarized wave. So we end up with our polarized wave in this direction. So you may have noticed here that the polarization direction is actually perpendicular to the lines on our polarizing filter. And that's because in terms of electromagnetic waves, polarizing filters are composed of long chains of organic molecules which absorb components of the electromagnetic field parallel to the molecules. So that means the lines here on the filter show that they're absorbing the components parallel to this direction. So that's why in this diagram, the plane of polarization we end up with is perpendicular to the line of the filter. So in this case, the lines on the polarizing filter show the direction in which the components of the wave are absorbed. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.